Uh, greetings, friends, and welcome to our continuing educational rounds here at Seclair, a holistic integrative psychiatric facility located outside of Delmont, where we treat uh, primarily people and perhaps diagnosis is second. I'm Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here, and today I'm joined by a few of my colleagues. On my far left would be Ruth Ann Valentine, psychologist. Sabda Chaudhry, psychiatrist. And Dr. Chaudhry is the medical director here at Seclair. And I'm Ashley Brown. I'm an art therapy intern from Seton Hill University. Indeed. So uh, today, Dr. Chaudhry, uh, we were mentioning about some of the things that impact uh, people's lives. And some of the things that impact people's lives of what, is, what has been dominating the news lately. Well, different things dominate the news, but of, of course at the at the level of our uh, national scene and also at the international scenes. A lot of um, uh, tragedies and turmoil uh, and, and uh, terrorism acts of uh, horrific acts of hurts by others are being being talked about a lot. Indeed, and what we what we see here at Seclair and what we sense in the public is predominantly a sense of fear. Absolutely. A sense of fear, not feeling safe, not feeling uh, a sense of confusion, not knowing who's friend and who's foe. And, and if there could be a hurt that can come upon us unexpectedly, whether we are watching a movie in a theater, whether we are in a foreign country, whether we are sitting very quietly in our work, workspace. So quite often what I see, Dr. Chaudhry, is that these acts of terrorism or violence throughout the world uh, are meant to instill fear in, 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 the, other, in the other populace. It's, it's, it's a method of control. Uh, and sometimes these fears are also fanned by the media. Yes, so I, I, I believe the fear is a very predominant force always playing in our, in our brain as, as, a, as, as a source of being originally to be safe, so that we all are safe, but fear is a fundamental, very hard-drived uh, force of life. So thus, uh, fear is part of us sitting here uh, biologically for uh, thousands of years that, that, uh, that we have been around. Uh, all animals fear, uh, so we being very sophisticated animals. So I just want to kind of go back in time a little bit and then begin to discern on some of the recent developments uh, in our in our living times. Um, uh, so as you and I were having a casual conversation about uh, the California incident of, of uh, shooting and the incidents around those and uh, ISS has been on the news for quite some time and just prior to that we had that uh, sh uh, uh, mass shooting at one of the one of the clinics, uh, I believe, around abortion-related matters. Um, so I just kind of randomly uh, picked up few few magazines which I happen to have access. So one is Angels and Demons, and so this is more of about traditions of uh, various religions and how we try to find peace in the middle of these very interesting life that we have. Uh, I cannot help but discern or make a observation that Adam as he came to being had temptation built into him and he nevertheless went down to the tree that he was forbidden to go to. Uh, and we are told through tradition that his children ended up having a fight among themselves uh, and one killed the other one. Um, so so it became at the very onset of the design of this human being that they are very interesting, they fight, they get into these challenges uh, among themselves. And then I don't necessarily read a lot of uh, magazines per se, but uh, news media magazine, but this, this just for the two within a month, November 23rd, uh, there is uh, this article, uh, the heading of the Time magazine is about uh, on the night of June 17th, uh, a gunman opened fire in the basement of a church in Charleston. Nine people died, five survived. What 
what it takes to forgive a killer. And, and so this was same background, similar kind of a, kind of a, you know, uh, but uh, as I observed, there was a lot of white in the background. Uh, and then that was very beautifully kind of set up. And then similar setup, but this time for a word stage, not a basement. And, and, and the title goes uh, Word War ISS. Uh, and there are a number of topics here, the lineage of terror, the, uh, our politics and how that they are trying to manage that, uh, France's cultural war, um, how to beat them and welcome refugees. And so they were very different subject matters on this, this whole thing. But again, uh, to me, these are contemplative times or they can be fearful times. And of course, fear can be a useful emotion also uh, for, for survival, for self-protection. However, Dr. Chandra, when we here at our clinic, when we see fear becoming disruptive, in a person's life and becoming uh, causing a lot of distress. Uh, how do you how do you address those topics? Well, so so it's at play whether it's somebody's uh, with a new diagnosis of mood disorder, addiction disorder, death and dying, any number of conditions can create fear. So our goal is to help people become mindful, or else the fear will prevail. It causes more stress more agonizing um, uh, life issues and sleepless nights. And then it feeds itself. It just makes a small thing catastrophic event. So our goal is to be able to allow our brain and bodies to be more mindful, be able to discern so that we can see the clarity in the midst of chaos. So what I hear you talking about is stepping back and becoming the observer and learning to label and identify these emotions and fears and finding out more about them so we'll be able to deal with them in a more productive way. Absolutely. So the California event is very, um, uh, very interestingly more recent. And so one of the first thing that came to even my heart was here's a person who is of Muslim faith uh, who had uh, links to Pakistan. I'm from Pakistan myself. And to be able to have such her, uh, 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 absolutely horrific act of doing is a total betrayal of trust. Uh, so these guys lived in a community where people trusted them and out of that became a profound betrayal. And then it just, it blankets everybody else's heart uh, who else might be fearing and worrying where the betrayal may come from. Uh, and that's the time to discern and recognize that um, it's important to see how our friendships can be strengthened in the middle of such betrayals. And how can we, as citizens of the world, help people deal with this sometimes type of irrational fear? Absolutely. So these can be either fear-provoking, victimizing, aggression times, or more time of coming together to understand each other even better. Um, and I like in the middle of these chaotic times uh, to get to know each other better so that we can strengthen the resolve of humanity, which does not have a religion. Uh, to me, terror does not have a religion. Terror-provoking act does not have a religion. It's a very commonplace activity adopted by anyone to just create terror. So religion is just is a, is a, is, 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 is misused or hijacked by people who either are killing people in the abortion clinic and or in the in the workplace and or in a McDonald or any place on the universal scheme of, of, of life. Individuals can pervert most any type of uh, dogma or doctrine to their own liking. I'd like to hear from Dr. Uh, Valentine on her, her views on how to uh, deal with these, this type of fear. I would like to preface what I'm going to say with um, uh, there's a deep disturbance of spirit within people who use violence and terror uh, against neighbor and, and driven by hatred. And, and it's, that hatred is validated by misinformed um, ideology. And, and so 
how to respond to fear because of that kind of behavior and ideology, it would be come to back to your soul, your spirit, where we connect in love. Uh, in this one of these magazines, talk about forgiveness, to be open uh, to the possibility of reconnecting to the divine spark that's inside of us that feeds us towards uh, love and peace. And is that difficult? Yes, because our first instinct is to strike back in hostility. And so I come back to the uh, uh, one's spirituality as well as one's mindfulness and, and being aware of what is happening. Our wise mind that guides us towards our soul, our heart, where love is and where the divine spark lives in all of us. So what you're talking about, Dr. Valentine, is perhaps this fear can be akin to darkness. Yes. And, and, and a darkness can be in someone's soul. Yes. And when we, there's a fear out there and we fear or hate back, then all we do is perpetuate the darkness. That's right. So, Dr. Chaudhary, you often talk about replacing a fear-based mind with a mind of awareness and a mind of knowledge. Love is the only thing that can surround us and rescue us in the times of darkness and difficulties. Uh, message of Jesus is pure love. His message was absolutely loving kindness and joys for everyone. And, and, and the mid, his life was life of hurts and, 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 and getting betrayed. Uh, but he only did one thing that was loving and loving kindness and loving for everyone, uh, for friends and foes. And that really is the true message that needs to continue to be prevailing even during these difficult times. That's an eternal message. And his message continues to reverberate uh, today throughout all faiths. This uh, leads me to, and nothing's that much different, in the 12-step world, uh, they talk about refer, would you kick a sick friend? Would you kick a sick friend? So we can consider these people having some type of sickness. That's pretty true. So we, pretty true. would you kick a sick friend? No, of course not. We try to get to have a bit, perhaps a little bit of a better understanding of them. Absolutely, absolutely. Very well said. But sometimes we don't realize that people in their adult, apparent competent, we call it in DBT, there's a concept called apparent competence. That means that people may look competent, but they really are not. <laughs> so we have to work with them that they are, they are apparent competent. That's very hard to be. So allowing people to become competent in knowledge, understanding, loving kindness is something that we all have to do it together. So could you possibly share with us your own personal experiences in, in, in dealing with uh, the outside world, given your, your circumstances. Yeah, so mines are uh, interesting. Um, I have obviously grew up in Pakistan. Uh, we saw absolute pure, blissful country, which then got disturbed by bigger chess player uh, activity, uh, as as you know, close to five to ten million. Refugees came to our country from Afghanistan when there was a war between, uh, you know, not a war, there was an occupation of uh, Soviet Union. So we saw that all of a sudden your peacefulness just goes away as if almost like you have people move into your neighborhood, you don't even know them. Um, and same thing is happening in Syria. And obviously this great country was built upon by people who were refugees at one time from other continents of distress. Um, so having having seen that bigger picture, I, I, I feel that when God is uh, unsettling different places, um, there is an opportunity built, built behind that. Uh, there's an element of obviously worry uh, and a fear that could this ignite a hatred among ourselves living here. Uh, but at the same time, I find myself really landing on only one thing, and that is that we got to make this as an opportunity. Make it as an opportunity. Could you expand on that? Uh, so, like you had gone to a uh, mosque to visit, you took some students, you had gone to a synagogue, you had gone to, uh, you know, you're planning to go to other places of, 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 of faith, including uh, some church uh, and, and, and a Hindu temple. So these times make us wanting to do more of the something to get to know our neighbor, uh, rather than avoiding our neighbor, uh, and, and, and removing the walls and the boundaries 
uh, and, and uh, even in this space sitting here, uh, it speaks volume. Uh, we have been able to uh, work together uh, looking at the wisdom in the midst of chaos and, and terror and betrayal, uh, which are abundant in this world. So again, I'm hearing you saying replacing a, a mind of uncertainty with a mind of knowledge and awareness. And curiosity and an understanding mm -hmm. and fearing uh, nothing, loving everything, fearing let our fear be our motivator in the back back seat rather than in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to one of my patients. He said, I want to put my fear in my trunk <laughs> where it will make a lot of noise. <laughs> So I, I think we put, put our fear in our trunk and then let ourselves be the driving force of life in the moments of such such difficulties. And so Ashley, from perhaps a student's perspective, you're mainly out in the mainstream of uh, younger people. What is, your, what is your perspective? What is your thoughts? What's your observations? I think I know what you talked about, educating yourself and all the experiences that I've done so far, just being here and going to the different the mosque, the synagogue, and kind of just expanding my knowledge. And I feel that I am better able to spread that message and I'm able to take back my experiences to my peers and my family and, like I said, kind of stop the ignorance and I think stop the fear, I think. Stop the fear. Well said. Well said, absolutely. Any uh, any final thoughts, uh, Dr. Valentine? Uh, we talked about... <laughs> Uh, connecting and this is an opportunity for us to have an interfaith dialogue amongst all the different uh, uh, religions, people of religion, people of spirituality in our community to talk and to connect and come to a common uh, core understanding of peace and love for one another even though we may come at our spirituality from a different perspective. We are all one. We are all grounded. We are all united uh, in loving kindness in our community. Dr. Chowder? Well, life is good. Life is beautiful. So we keep on churning the life with all its spectrums. And indeed, my challenge to everyone out there watching or viewing listening to this uh, particular podcast is that uh, no one can do everything but everyone can do something so my challenge to you is to there's an old Jewish tradition of giving a hundred blessings a day so my thought to you is to, to begin to bless people rather than rather than curse them there's a there's a Buddhist tradition of wow wishing others well it's very difficult to have resentment and hatred in your heart when you're wishing somebody well you can try that the next time you develop some uh, road rage uh, my challenge is to do a do a small kindness for another uh, smile at the cashier at sheet smile at the cashier at, at, at the grocery store and tell them that when they do a nice job tell them and uh, you don't know how much they would appreciate that so let's try to let's try to spread a little positivity and spread a little kindness and Ashley, I believe that you have a uh, way of taking us out. Yes, I have a short meditation for us all. So I kind of want us to start for you at home. Maybe close your eyes, put your feet on the ground, and start by taking three deep breaths. Now, I want you to imagine yourself standing in the center of a beautiful clearing in an ancient forest. The air smells fresh and clean, heavy with the musky smell of wet earth after a gentle rain. You find yourself slowly walking around the clearing. It feels familiar and safe. You feel yourself surrounded by the energy of love. A shaft of light fills the clearing with a magical light. Slowly, people begin to fill the clearing. As each one enters the clearing, they reach out and hug you. You feel full and connected and at peace. Before long, the entire clearing is full of people holding each other's hand, sharing love and feeling connected and at peace. You look around at the faces. They are all different ages, races, shapes, and sizes. You look around and you notice their hearts are beaming with light. A beautiful pink light shines from their hearts, joining with the light of those around them. You mentally see them moving through their lives making all their choices based on love. They are free of fear. You are free of fear. Love guides your way. Love surrounds you and fills your being. 
You see a world in which everyone is free of fear, in which the band of fear is removed from their hearts and their minds. It is a world in which all people realize they are one, and all people make their choices based on love and mutual respect. It is a world free of hatred and free of prejudice. The air is clean and the water is clean. Everyone, including the heads of state, the leaders of industry, making their decisions based on the good of the planet and all people, great and small. Take a few minutes to envision that world and then know it could be even more magnificent than you could possibly picture. Allow it to be grand, glorious, and free. Imagine your life in that world. Imagine yourself doing what you love as your livelihood. Imagine all your wants and needs being effortlessly met. Imagine that for everyone, everywhere in this world. Imagine all people living in peace and harmony. Imagine a world of love. Imagine a world that is safe, loving, supportive, and nurturing to all its inhabitants. Now, let it be so. Let that world take form in your mind and begin to materialize in yours. And on behalf of Ashley, Dr. Valentine, Dr. Chaudhry, and myself, we offer you a free prescription. You can fill yourself at any time. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we'd ask you to fish without bait. Until then, thank you so much for joining us.